الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters, how are you guys doing today? It's been an action-packed week, right? With emotions and drama and chaos and everyone speaking and voicing opinions and blah 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 with regards to the elections. But now that the elections is over and the election result did not go in favor of the Muslims who wanted to vote, and I'm not from those Muslims who was pushing people to vote, but there were Muslims who believe voting is the way forward and it didn't go in their favor. Okay? Jeremy Corbyn did not win, who was you know gonna be the one who the people hoped would make things better for the Muslims. So now what do you do moving forward? Do you just sit here and wait another four years to go by until the next election comes? And in that election, you try to elect your candidate. And in that time, more Islamophobia will increase. Legislation will probably come out that would infringe our basic right to practice our religion, a right that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us. Legislation will come out that will have serious effects and implications and consequences on foreign policy, further worsening things for our brothers and sisters back home, creating chaos around the world. Do we just sit here and wait for that to happen? Brothers and sisters, there is a group of people that will tell you, yes, wait for that to happen. Because there are people who believe that change can only come, change can only come by means of politics. Change can only come by means of an election. And this is a belief that is honestly a belief that is misguided and is a belief that is directly in opposition to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Ali I would like you to accommodate and entertain the Quranic method that I'm going to propose to you today, the prophetic method that I'm going to propose to you today. This method that I'm going to propose to you today, this strategy that I'm going to propose to you today, that we need to adopt here in the West to better our situation to, so that we can be safe from Islamophobia and safe from our religious practices and rights being limited and safe from you know, calamity and destruction and chaos to the Muslim Ummah, just generally speaking around the world. This is a strategy for you. All the time people were saying, Brother Imran, you're telling us not to vote, but what alternative do you have? This is the alternative. I'm telling you once again, the camp that will say to vote, they believe that that is really and truly the only way. They'll tell you next four years, just work on politics, building a relationship with politicians, so that when that time comes to vote again, you can win. I'm saying put that whole politics to the side. This is the prophetic method, the Quranic method I'm going to give you, backed up by evidences and delil. And inshallah ta'ala, if you follow this brothers and sisters, you will find that very quickly the situation of the Muslims will change, not just here, but all around the world. But like I said to you, if you're a politician, then you're not going to listen to this. If you're an activist, you're not going to take it on board. I'm talking to believers with this. Because this is the Quran, the Book of Allah, that I want to present to you, the prophetic method I'm going to present to you. If you want it, only a heart that has Iman will adopt it. Some people are going to be like, this is not practical, no brother, we have to do this, what about this, what about that, what about this? I'm saying, you're a politician, you're looking, you're looking for me to give you some kind of political activism, some kind of political strategy, I'm not giving you no political strategy, I'm literally giving you a spiritual strategy that has direct tangible implications, it happened before and it can happen again inshallah ta'ala. That's, I'm speaking to a heart that's got iman right now. So like I said, if you're a politician, you're expecting me to tell you about this, nah, but I'm not going to tell you about no protest, I'm not going to tell you about no voting, I'm not going to tell you about no election, no by-election, no, I'm not going to tell you about no petition, no. Straight Quran Sunnah. If you want, if you, if you're a slave of Allah, then this is for you, Inshallah Taala. Without any further ado, let us begin. Here is the method, the strategy post-election that the Muslims need to adopt. The first thing, and there's only four points, by the way. There's only four, but the first thing is that you need to call to Tawheed. You need to do da'wah to Tawheed. In other words, Tawheed al ibadah Tawheed al uluhiya which means call people to worship Allah alone. Call people to sing all Allah in worship. That there is no one worthy to be worshipped in truth except Him. Don't call people to believe in one Allah. No, they already believe in one Allah. But they don't worship one Allah. They worship graves. They have ta'weez. They have this. They worship Jesus. Some of them worship their own desires. Call to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. That will have a direct effect on what? On the situation of the Muslims here in the UK. What is the evidence for this? Allah said, وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَا يَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that this is a promise that Allah makes to those who believe. Again, we're talking, to, this, this, is, this is a discussion for believers who have iman. Okay? It's not a discussion for those who don't have iman. They're, not, they're going to be like, oh, what? Just voting. Sorry, oh, da'wah all day. You're going to say da'wah, da'wah, da'wah. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to those who, who've got iman. Because Allah said, there's a promise He makes to the people of iman. 
not to the politicians, not to the activists. This is the promise Allah makes to the people who have Iman. What is it? Allah said, يَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ We're going to give them authority on the earth. كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ The way that we gave authority to those who came before. Did Allah not give authority to the Sahaba? From the footsteps of China in the east to the shores of Spain and the west, it happened, right? It happened. So Allah made this promise before and He fulfilled it before. Now His promise is still open for us to take and Allah is telling you that He's going to do it for you the way He did it before. Come on, these, the, 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 the Sahaba were in a worse situation than me and you, okay? We in the UK are not struggling like the Sahaba were. Sahaba were being killed in the streets. Yeah, and they what they managed to overcome Rome, <laughs> overcome Persia, right? Footsteps of China in the east and the shores of Spain in the west. So this promise is real. Allah did it before, He can do it for me and you again. Okay? No, that's not the only promise that Allah will give you authority. Allah gives you another promise. Allah gives you another promise. What's the promise? Allah said your religion that Allah has chose for you, which is Islam, Allah will establish it for you. Allah will establish this religion for you. Okay, not just that. There's a third promise. What's the third promise? Allah said, Allah will change the situation and the state of fear that you're in to a state of security and safety. Is that not what we're concerned about? Our safety. Our sisters are being attacked on the streets. Islamophobia is on the rise. Our messages are being attacked. Okay, we're, we're, our, our, the, 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 the right to practice our religion is a threat. Okay, we're not safe to practice our religions. It's not safe to wear hijab in the streets, to wear the niqab on the streets, to wear the jilbab on the streets. It's safety not a big concern. Safety of the Muslims, hey, safety of the Muslims back home. Okay, little kids have got drones being dropped on them. Okay, is that not an issue of safety? Yes, it is. So Allah has made three promises here. Three promises. The first promise is He'll give you authority. The second promise is that He will establish a religion for you. The third promise, that's the second promise, sorry. The third promise is that He will remove the fear that you're in and put you in a state of safety. That's a promise Allah made. But this promise is conditional. What's the condition? Allah mentioned it after that. Ya'budoona me. Worship me alone, Allah said. La yushrikuna bi shay'a. Do not come with any shirk. Allah didn't say. Allah didn't say if you want these three things, get involved in politics. Allah didn't say if you want these three things, you know, uh, vote for a leader or, you know, blah. No. Allah just said, Tawheed. Ibadah. Tawheed. Worship me alone. Don't come with no shirk. Worship me alone. Ya budunani. Worship me alone. La yushrikuna bi shay'a. Don't do no shirk with me whatsoever. In any way, shape, form. Not even the smallest amount of shirk. No ta'weez, no nothing. So, brothers and sisters, wallahi. Wallahi, pay attention. If you want the Muslim situation to get better here, your, pro, your, your concern should not be Theresa May. Your concern should not be Jeremy Corbyn. Your concern should be the ta'weez that the people are wearing in your community. The grave worshipping that they're doing. They worship, the Shia worshipping Ali radiallahu anhuma, Imam Hassan Hussein radiallahu anhuma. The Sufi and the Baradis are worshipping the Prophet Ali sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even the Sahaba and the other awliya who are in their grave. They're worshipping them. Okay? Some people are worshipping themselves. Some girls worshipping their boyfriends because they love them so much the way that they should only love Allah. Some boyfriends love their girlfriends. That the way that they should only be loving Allah. This is the fundamental thing. Okay, okay. some of you say, no, I don't do shit, but you don't pray. So make them pray. Because prayer is a direct manifestation of that tawheed. If you want to worship, Allah says, worship me alone. You don't even worship. Make the people pray. Make them do these acts of worship. Make them come with tawheed. And manifest that tawheed with the salah, which is the most important thing. The most important worship. Do the salah with tawheed. Okay, and there's no shirk in the salah. Do the, do the zakat, do the fasting, do the hajj. Teach the people worship. And then show them this worship is purely for Allah and nothing else should be in there. And Allah said, if you do that, Allah is saying, I'm going to give you authority on the earth. I'm going to give you uh, establishment of your religion. I'm going to give you safety and security. Some people all day every day say, we need to establish khilafah, we need to establish khilafah. What's your plan? I say, Akhi Barakallah Fiqh, it's not your job, it's not my job. Allah said himself, لا يستخلفن, لا يستخلفن في الأرض. Allah said, he will give us khilafah. Allah will establish it for us. Not necessarily here in the UK, we're not, we, don't, we, don't, we don't care. It's, we, want, we, want, we want khilafah in a Muslim world. We're not trying to overtake these people, let them do their own thing. That's between them and Allah. We're not trying to get involved in that. We don't want to be involved in any politics in this country. We don't want to be involved in any government in this country. We want them to, you, you, you do your government. You do it the way you want to do it. We're just not going to harm you. We're not going to cause you no, no, no stress. We're not going to threaten your security and safety. We're not going to do that too, so you don't bother us. We're not gonna, we, 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 don't want to, we don't want to establish our authority in your country. It's your country. You do your thing. We want it back home, okay? We want it back home. If you want that, okay, it's not about getting involved in politics. Allah said, worship me. Da'wah. 
Some people say da'wah, 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 da'wah. Oh, did you gonna do da'wah? How's that gonna change anything? Allah said it's gonna change. This is how the Prophet changed. The Prophet just he gave da'wah. The Prophet gave da'wah, da'wah, da'wah. People mock it, da'wah, da'wah, da'wah. Yeah, the Prophet gave da'wah, da'wah, da'wah. The Prophet gave da'wah, da'wah, da'wah. And Allah gave him Medina. Then from Medina, Allah gave him the whole of the uh, Arabian Peninsula. Then after he died, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them Persia. And Allah gave them Rome. And Allah gave them from the footsteps of China in the east to the shores of Spain in the west. How? Da'wah, da'wah, da'wah. That's how it started. 13 years the Prophet gave. Da'wah, da'wah, da'wah. Nothing else. Da'wah. Don't tell me, oh, the Prophet Ali Sassam was getting involved in government because, you know, he was going to the tribes. He was going to the tribes. What? Do you, have you even read the pledge he was taking with the tribe people? Have you read the pledge? What is the pledge saying? Go, go, go open up Sahih, Sahih Bukhari, Kitab al-Iman, Hadith, Ubadat ibn Samit, radiyallahu anhu. What was the bay? What was the bay'ah he took with them? It was that you don't do no shirk. That you don't kill no one. That you don't fornicate. That you don't steal. <laughs> That's the pledge he was going and seeking with the people. Don't do shirk, don't murder, don't, don't do fornication, don't steal. These were the pledges he alayhi to was taking. What, what, what politics is there? It was that what he was giving to them. He was going to the tribal leaders, he was trying to give that to them. He wasn't trying to politically engage. And the proof of this is that even Quraysh came to him and said, Muhammad, we're going to make you our leader, okay? We're going to make you our leader. One whole year, everyone's going to worship your God. And the other year, the people can worship the idols. Now the Prophet ﷺ, if he was concerned with politics, he would say, okay, whoa, 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 this is a big step, you're going to make me my leader. Okay, I'm in charge. So then I, I, can, have a, you know, I can have that effect as a leader, because that's what they tell you, work your way to the top, and when you work your way to the top, you establish, right, the Sharia. So then why didn't the Prophet do that? He could have said, okay, okay, yeah, work my way to the top, they give me leadership, one whole year they're going to worship Allah, in that time I can use that time to bring them to Islam. No, the Prophet said, he didn't, he didn't get involved like that. That was, that, was, that was what he gave. And Allah said, if you do that here, security and safety, authority, and your religion will be established. So that's the first thing. Get rid of the shirk in our communities and call the kuffar to tawheed. Call them to tawheed. Call them to actually worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's better that you do that, inshallah ta'ala. It will have more of an effect. And this is a promise from Allah. And who better to fulfill this promise other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing, my beloved brothers and sisters, is seek beneficial knowledge. Seek knowledge. Seek knowledge of the religion. Shall I tell you why? Because if you want to come with Tawheed, then Tawheed, which is La ilaha illallah, that there is no deity worthy to be worshipped in truth except Allah, that requires knowledge. What is the evidence for this? Allah said, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Allah commanded you to have knowledge. And then He said, La ilaha illallah. So what precedes La ilaha illallah is knowledge. Who understood this? Is it me? Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah. Imam al-Bukhari in his Sahih, he chaptered a chaptering that actions, sorry, that knowledge precedes actions. That before you do an action, you come with knowledge. So la ilaha illallah is an action of the heart and it manifests on the actions of the limbs and actions of the tongue. It requires knowledge before it. A person who really wants to understand la ilaha illallah needs to study la ilaha illallah, you need to study the religion. You need to study Muhammad and Rasulullah. You need to study Aqeelah. You need to study Tawheed. You need to study these things, my brothers and sisters. Because if you don't study it, how would you know La ilaha illallah? The prophets came to teach La ilaha illallah. Which means someone has to learn what they taught. It's not as simple as, I've memorized the statement, now I know it. No. It's something very deep, very detailed. There's not an ayah in the Quran except that it revolves around La ilaha illallah. It's something very big, my brothers and sisters. So we need to take the time out to study. We need to take the time out to seek this beneficial knowledge and then we can act upon it. Because in another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Huwa alladhi arsala rasoolahu bil huda wa deen al haq. Liyudhirahu ala deen kulli. Walau karihal kafirun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala karihal mushrikun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that Allah is the one who sent the Prophet, the Messenger. He sent him with two things. Bil huda. The ulama, when they explain tafsir of this ayah, Imam Ibn Kathir and the rest of them, they mention Bil Huda means beneficial knowledge. Wa deen al haq which means implementing that knowledge. So Allah sent the Prophet with two things, beneficial knowledge, and then for you to be able to implement that beneficial knowledge into actions. And then Allah said, why did He send the Prophet with beneficial knowledge and, 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 and righteous actions to be implemented? Why did He send the Prophet with these two things? So that Islam can become apparent and victorious over all other religions. 
Knowledge and implementing that knowledge is what is required, my beloved brothers and sisters. Knowledge and implementing that knowledge. So you need to really seek knowledge. You need to study, okay? Like I said to you, inshallah ta'ala, after Ramadan, we have a program on the Muslim Survival Guide where we're going to be going through Tawheed and Aqeed. It's the, uh, the, the first course that I do after Ramadan, inshallah ta'ala, is going to be learning La ilaha illallah. We're going to go through the four principles of shirk, the ten nullifiers of Islam, and the three questions that are asked in the grave. Who is Allah? Who is your prophet? Who is your uh, and, and what is your religion? That's the first few courses that, and books that we're going to go through, inshallah ta'ala, on the Muslim Survival Guide about a month after Ramadan. And right now you can access it for absolutely free. The offer is actually only available for the next 24 hours. Uh, just over 24 hours If you go to the link below Fastingandfurious.com Which is our Ramadan course Just leave your email address And we'll show you how you can get access Inshallah ta'ala For free inshallah And if you stay after Ramadan So right now you can benefit From the Ramadan courses that we have That are on there And also we've got a Fatiha Tafsir Fatiha course Coming out inshallah ta'ala Explanation of Surah Al-Fatiha Then after Ramadan We're going to start learning about La ilaha illallah Or you can go to a scholar Who is a Sunni Upon the methodology of the Salaf or, or a sheikh Or a strong student of knowledge And you can learn from him Which is inshallah ta'ala Amazing and better for you as well So the second thing is Beneficial knowledge Because look Tawheed It all revolves around Tawheed Tawheed And then that Tawheed You need to learn it You need to learn La ilaha illallah So you seek beneficial knowledge The third thing brothers and sisters Is that you need to be a positive Part of your community you need to be a positive part of your community. You need to actually better things in the community. Wallahi, yeah, I remember I, I, I listened to one brother who's, who's, very, who's very close and beloved to me. He said, look, if all of the kuffar decided one day, let's kick the Muslims out. Like, do we have anything to say that we contributed to be like, no, don't kick us out? Not that I'm saying we should beg them, but I'm just saying, let's just say, they wanted to, like, could you blame them? Like, what have we done? You might say, oh, well, we haven't done harm. In a sense, where it's only been a fringe minority of people that, 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 that you know, attributed themselves to the religion of Islam, that did some chaotic things that we all happen to get labelled for. So you could say, we haven't done anything amazing, but we haven't done anything like outrageous either. It's just a small minority that have done something wrong. Okay? But the thing is, the reality of the matter is that that small minority reflects all of us. So what have me and you done to change that perception of Islam? Have we fed the homeless? Have we fed the home, homeless? Have we done that? The Prophet ﷺ was asked, Ayyul Islami Khair, what is the best Islam? What's the best action of Islam? What's the best thing in Islam? And the Prophet said, To feed food to the ones who are hungry, to feed the poor. You got how many homeless people? We got over 30,000 homeless people on the streets, I think in, I think in, in the whole of the UK. 30,000 homeless people. What have you done and I done? That's not, the, 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 the Kuffar believe that's the job for their government. But we believe that's a job for us. That's, that's a Muslim job. We should be doing that. So then the people can see these people, people having a positive effect in our community. What do we do to the kids who are on drugs? What do we do for our community? I'm not saying some don't. I know some brothers who really put this work in. They do help homeless. They do work with kids on the street. But like I'm saying, do something for the community. Well, a lot of people will come back to you and be like, Ra, you know what? Yeah, man. They're doing this and their religion teaches them to do this. It will make their heart warm towards Islam. The evidence for this is the ayah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Mumtahina لَا يَنْهَاكُمُ اللَّهُ عَنِ الَّذِينَ لَمْ يُقَاتِلُوكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ وَلَمْ يُخْرِجُوكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ أَنْ تَبَرُّوهُمْ وَتُقَسِيطُوا إِلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْسِطِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Allah has not prohibited you from being good, from being just, from being nice, from being generous To who? To the ones who don't fight you for your religion and don't try to remove you from your lands we are not being fought for our religion in the UK And we're not being fought to be removed from our lands here In the UK or the West So then there is no reason for us to not be nice to these people There's no reason for us to not be just to these people we have, There's every reason for us to be just to them and nice to them They've not harmed us Okay And if they have started to harm us to some degree Then that's because of our inaction What have you done to show the people You know what, there's actually khair in the community here the Muslim community. We haven't done that. So you can't help but kind of, you know, empathize with why they think we're such a burden. They just see us. We've not done anything. Yeah, there's a few idiots that are coming out and doing some dumb stuff. Yeah. And they're making the whole of us look bad. But then we're not doing anything to counter that. The Prophet Ali Satsum was concerned with the image of Islam. That the that Khariji guy who came to the Prophet Ali Satsum and he insulted him and he said, Muhammad be just. And the Prophet Isa told us that, you know, this was the first man and this, the Khawarij would come from him. The Prophet said, from him will come a people who, you know, and the Prophet explained the Khawarij from him. 
And Umar radiallahu anhu said, shall I not just deal with him now, ya Rasulullah? Just, just whack him one, just deal with him, end him now, if he's going to create so much chaos. And the Prophet said, no, leave him. Why? Because the Prophet said, the people will say, the people will say, what will the people say? Why is the Prophet concerned about what the people say? Because he's concerned about the image of Islam. He said, the people say that Muhammad kills his companions. Because as far as the people were concerned, this man came to the Prophet he gave him bay'ah. Okay, he's a Khariji, and from him this evil sector is going to come, that's going to create chaos and whatnot. And he's the father of these ISIS guys and whatnot. And the father of these people who are doing these terrorist attacks, because he is the dad of the Kharijis. But the Prophet saying, still the people don't see like that. The way that the people see it is that, oh, okay, someone came to Muhammad, gave him Pledge of Allegiance, and then Muhammad just killed him. So the Prophet was concerned about the image of Islam. He didn't want that to happen. So he said, and that's why I don't get some people who are so dumb. Yeah, They're out there trying to say, oh, we're going to kill people in the name of Islam. The Prophet was, do you not understand it's going to harm Islam more than anything else? You jokers, well, lie, it makes me, I think, do you even understand this religion? Do you even understand this religion? It's an absolute joke. Islam is a religion of mercy, okay? It's a religion of mercy, it's a religion of tenderness. And it's also a religion that's very conscious of how it's perceived by the people. Because if Islam is perceived bad, then people are going to perceive Allah and they're going to perceive the Prophet ﷺ as bad. Okay, so we have to present Islam in the best possible way. Of course, not to the extent we compromise the religion. No, we don't do that. But at the same time, we do not present the religion in a way that it's, it's, it's just is barbaric, which is not. Okay, so Allah told you, be good, be just to them. And I just mentioned on this ayah where Allah said, وَتُقْسِتُ إِلَيْهِمْ Be just to them. Imam Al-Qurtubi mentioned something powerful in his tafsir. I read it just a week and a half ago. He mentioned that being just is something that we always have to be. Whether they fight us or they don't fight us, whether they harm us or try to remove us from our land or don't, we have to be just to them regardless. Justice is a characteristic that we never allow to leave. Even if someone is being unjust to us, we still have to be just to this person. So he's saying when Allah said here, وَتُقْسِتُ إِلَيْهِمْ He said, the ones who do not fight you, be just to them. He doesn't mean just in its original form, just. Because even if they were trying to fight you and trying to remove you from your land, you still have to be just to them. You still have to treat them with justice. So he said, what this here means is that you have to give, they, they give them money. Financially support them and aid them. Imam Qurtubi said this, not me. You think you know the Quran better than Imam Qurtubi? Then that's up to you. But Imam Qurtubi said, hey, support them. So the woman who's a widow, the woman who's a single parent, because there's so many single parent women whose husbands or men just impregnated them, left them with a child, and then the guy just, you know, he went off somewhere. So now find women who are single parents, support them, fund them, okay? Find homeless people, take care of them, you know? Find people in the community who are struggling. Muslims, we give, we feed people, we take care of people. That's why I was saying, and a lot of people didn't understand that, you know, the, the, the victims of the people who, who you know, the, 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 the families of the victims who went through the attack on London Bridge and Westminster and Manchester, I was saying it would be nice to financially support them because maybe the, there was a father who died who used to provide money for the family. And imagine how powerful that doubt would be that, you know, our religion doesn't actually tell us, you know, to cure people. Uh, and, and that was not from our religion. What our religion rather, t rather tells us is, is to give you money, to take care of you. So if you got, you know, I'm trying to raise just 10 grand to give to some of the families, okay? You know, we only managed to raise just under 3,000 pounds, alhamdulillah. It's the month of Ramadan. It's not only a sadaqah, it's also a means of da'wah. If you go to the link below, wallah, it'd be so nice if you guys can just donate. Wallah, it'd be nice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give, when I give it to the people, inshallah ta'ala, I'm gonna keep you posted and show you. And hopefully it'll be a means to soften their hearts. And that will be just one step forward. That will be a practical step forward. And it's a Quranic step, inshallah ta'ala. The final thing, brothers and sisters, the final step, the fourth step, so we mentioned three so far, is call to Tawheed, seek beneficial knowledge and implement that knowledge. And of course, the, the fourth thing is to play a positive role in the community to benefit the people around you. The fourth and final thing is to be patient and be pious. To be patient and be a person with taqwa. To be a person who's conscious of Allah, scared of Allah, and implementing the commands of Allah, and staying away from Allah's prohibition, because that is what taqwa is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ali Imran, لا يألونكم خبالا ودوا ما عنتم قد بدت البغضاء من أفوائهم وما تخفي صدورهم أكبر. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, they will not spare anything to ruin you. They will not spare anything to destroy you, okay, to ruin you. Who is Allah talking about their enemies? The enemies of Islam and the enemies of the Muslims. They will do everything to destroy you, Allah said. Not just that. They are eager to see you in distress. They want to see the Muslims in distress. Allah said, قَدْ بَبَتِ الْبَغْضَاءُ مِنْ أَفْوَائِهِمْ The hatred that they have has come onto their mouth. Before, they would never spew their hatred out in public. But now they will tell you this is Islamism, Islamic extremism. Islam is the problem. Off with Islam. They've showed you now. 
Before they used to say extremism. Extremism has got nothing to Islam. Why are you saying Islamic extremism? Extre- Islam and extremism can't be used in the same sentence. Islam, the first religion to speak out against extremism was Islam. The Prophet ﷺ said three times, may the extremists perish. Okay? The Prophet told, Allah told us in the Quran, Ya Ahlul Kitab, O people of the book, O Jews and Christians, la taghlu, la taghlu fi dinikum. Don't be extreme in your religion. So the Jews and the Christians were extremists before the Muslims were. That's what Allah is telling us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Islam is not got anything to be extreme. How do you say Islamic extremism in the same sentence? Rather, the problem is not with extremism. You have a problem with Islam. That's the issue. So Allah is telling us it's become onto their mouth now. Before they used to hide it. Before they never come out in public. But now they come out and they say publicly, we need to get rid of Islam. Okay? But then Allah tells you what they're saying on their mouth. But that which is in their hearts They've already shown you that they hate you with what they say on their tongue But that which is in their hearts Allah said is even worse They even have even more hatred for you in their hearts They're not fully letting out how much they hate you If they fully let it out you'll see Ooh. So I'm saying is that not relevant to us? Is that not relevant to us? What does Allah tell us to do in this time? Does he tell us to get involved in politics? Does he tell us to go start being aggressive in the streets? No, wallahi, Allah doesn't tell us to do that A couple of hours later Allah said Wa in tasbiru. If you are patient, and you come with taqwa, which is fear of Allah, that leads you towards obeying His commands and staying away from what He made haram. If you come with taqwa and sabr and patience, Allah said, if you do that, la yadurukum kaiduhum shay'a. Allah said, it will not harm you, the plotting and the planning that they do against you. So, what is the thing that will save us? Allah said, taqwa and sabr. If we if we say okay, they're harming us, but we're gonna practice sabr. Sabr in time. What's sabr? Sabr means in what Allah commanded you. Allah commanded you to pray your fajr. So be patient and get up and pray. Don't sleep. That's patience. Also to be patient to stay away from haram. Allah told you don't look at that girl. Don't do zina. But you go fornicate with her. You listen to music. You're not patient enough. You're not patient to withhold. Be patient for jannah, but you fall into that disobedience. That's again a lack of patience. And to be patient in times of calamity. That's patience. You do those three. Then you come with patience. And what is taqwa? Taqwa means to be conscious that Allah is watch, watching you. And you're so scared that because Allah is watching you, that He might punish you if you disobey Him. In terms of what He commanded you, in terms of falling into that which He prohibited you. If you come with sabr and taqwa together, brothers and sisters, Allah said, La It will not harm you, they're plotting and they're planning. No matter how much they hate you, no matter how much they want to destroy you. They can come out where they want, okay? They can have whoever in power. It can be whatever party and whatever politician and prime minister. It will not harm you as long as you're patient and as long as you come with taqwa. Wallahi, it's not me, it's Allah. And if you still don't want to take it, Wallahi, all I say is, what can I say? I'm not an enforcer. I'm not an, I'm not an enforcer. My job is to convey the message to you. I gave you these verses. Just to recap, inshallah ta'ala, this is our strategy. Call to Tawheed, number one. Beneficial knowledge, number two. Implement that knowledge. And one of the ways you implement it is that you give charity, you help the community around you. And number four, patience and taqwa. That means don't get emotional. Don't get, don't get logical. Your logic is not greater than Allah's knowledge. Your logic is limited to what you understand of the world. Allah has encompassed all knowledge. Your knowledge is dependent upon the limit. Your logic is based on the limited knowledge you have. Allah has encompassed all knowledge. So He knows and understands better. And He's told you this. So if you come with Tawheed and you seek knowledge and you implement that knowledge and one of the ways I told you is to benefit the community around you. And finally you come with patience and piety. You will find that what? You will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will benefit you. Patience will prevent them from harming you. Patience and piety will prevent them from harming you. Giving them charity will soften their hearts towards Islam. Beneficial knowledge will teach you what la ilaha illallah is. That you will implement and call to and give da'wah to. And then Allah said he will give you authority. And he will remove you know, fear from you. And give you safety and security and establish your religion. Wallahi, I don't know what else you want. And by the way, on the issue of piety, by the way. The issue of taqwa. Because Allah said if you come with taqwa, they're plotting and planning won't harm you, right? How do you get taqwa? Allah told you. Allah said, worship him. O people, worship him. 
Why? لعلكم تتقون So you can have taqwa. Worship leads to taqwa. Tawheed directly leads to, leads to taqwa. So you come with tawheed, it directly causes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, leads to the state where Allah is going to protect you and they won't be able to harm you. And what did Allah say about fasting in Ramadan? يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Allah said that fasting has been prescribed for you. Why? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So you can have taqwa. Fasting in the month of Ramadan and worshipping Allah in the month of Ramadan leads you to have taqwa. If you want to understand more about what taqwa is, then go to my uh, fasting and fear in the Muslim survival guide. I explained in detail what taqwa is because it's the objective of Ramadan. And it's the thing that if you come with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, well, what? He will cause them to not be able to harm you. And this is how we move forward. Not to get involved in their politics, not to get aggressive, not to start beating people in the streets even though hardly any of us do it. It's only a fringe minority. That's not the way forward. The way forward, wallahi, wallahi, is just literally in your house, establish tawheed. And then teach people tawheed outside. Literally, that's it. That requires you to seek knowledge. That manifests in patience and taqwa when you come with the tawheed. And also to just benefit the community around you. Feed people and whatnot. Do these things. Wallahi, do these things. That's literally it. It's long. Shaykh al-Albani, rahimullah, used to say, Tariquna tawil. Our path is long. It's long. But it is the one that is right. You want to take shortcuts. You want to just think, oh, you can vote for a politician. He's going to change all this. No. If that was the case, wallahi, Allah would have told us in the Quran. Allah would have indicated. The Prophet would have told us. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Hadith, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Asr radiallahu anhu, if I'm not mistaken. He said that there is not a Prophet who came except that it was obligatory upon him to what? Tell his people every good for them and to tell them of every harm. So you think the Prophet left this out? You're telling me he didn't do his job? He couldn't have told us? No, rather in these direct situations, the Prophet is telling us to do these things. Quote to read, stick to it. You, like I said, you, you, you want to you wanna walk, you want to get to a goal. You want to get to a goal which is safety, security, protection, authority, right? But you don't want to take the path that it takes to get to that destination. It's like the poet said, you're trying to reach your destination, but the ship does not sail on land. You're in a ship, you're on sea, okay? You can't cut through land. You have to go all the way around. You have to go, you're, you're here, there's land, this is land. You want to get from here to here, you can't cut through the land, you've got to go sail all the way around, it's long. But that's the only way to the destination. You can try and bring the ship to the land, but the ship does not sail on land, it sails on sea. So brothers and sisters, I leave you there. I would really, wallahi, urge you, please, benefit from our Muslim Survival Guide program. Like I said, right now, it's free for you to access, and it's free only for the next 24 hours. You can access it, inshallah, that I go to the link below. Fastingandfurious.com inshallah ta'ala You will get direct access to our fasting course And if you stay on it after Ramadan You'll be able to access all of the other things inshallah ta'ala But I really request you to share this video It's sad because when Muslims want to vote Okay and they've not got no textual basis for it Thinking that this is going to be their solution Everyone talks about it and everyone spreads it like wildfire But then when we bring Quranic solutions No one wants to watch it No one wants to benefit from it Because this, this, is, this is like I said to you This is for the believers so anyway, I leave you there. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh, sorry. Also, like I said, please go to the link below. I'm still trying to raise money for those families of the victims of the, of the attacks. Like I said, of course, we're raising for our brothers and sisters around the world. Always we are. But inshallah ta'ala, I also want this to be a means of da'wah for those families. It might soften their hearts. So go to the link below. We're trying to raise 10 grand. We're on just under three bags. 3,000. Hopefully get 10 inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.